I went on to the flight deck and bowed politely to my noble father. Dearest father and best of captains, have you tracked down Belinda's parents yet? He shook his head, and brushed back his fur with a weary tentacle. No, beloved child. Not yet. I felt relieved. I didn't want to face her parents. But Belinda had followed me. Not yet? She shouted. Why not? What's the hold up? Our telescopes can't see their ship, explained the captain. And there's still no reply to our radio signals. I'll send them a message. They'll listen to me. Belinda rushed over to the radio. She bellowed into it so loudly that the captain had to cover all four of his ears. Mommy! Daddy! She yelled. Come and find me now. I'm on an awful purple alien spaceship full of awful purple aliens. There's nothing to eat but sludge. You better come and get me right this minute. Or else. She stepped back from the radio. That ought to do it. She declared. I do hope so, dear and delightful Belinda, sighed the captain. But there's a lot of space out there. We must keep trying, said Roa. Poor Belinda. Her parents must be missing her dreadfully. Then I did something terrible. I was rude again. Twice in one day. Huh. I snorted. Missing Belinda? You're joking. Who'd want her back? They've probably lost her on purpose. Belinda's face scrunched up. I thought she was about to yell at me again. But she didn't. Instead, something very strange happened. Belinda's eyes began to leak. She stood there making funny choking noises and dripping all over the floor. Oh, help! Said Roa. What's wrong with her? Maybe she's dying. I felt terrible. Don't die, Belinda. I urged her. I didn't mean it. Honestly. Then Belinda opened her mouth wide and howled. We all had to cover our ears. What if it's true? She bawled. What if they don't want me back? What if they've gone away and left me here forever? Oh, no. I gasped in horror. Imagine being stuck with Belinda forever. I know I'm too bossy, howled Belinda. Maybe they're sick of me. If they'll only come back for me, I'll never ever be bossy again. And she collapsed into the captain's chair, boo-hooing. Roa stroked her yellow knots. Father gently patted her wigglies. Even I felt sorry for her. A bit. We were all so busy trying to comfort her that we didn't notice the red light flashing on the control panel. We didn't hear the soft thud of a ship landing outside. We didn't see the doors open, and two tall aliens come out until Belinda opened her eyes wide and shrieked. Mommy! Daddy! You've come! Belinda ran out to the landing bay. We followed her nervously. I didn't want to meet Belinda's parents. They'd probably be ten times as loud and bossy as she was. And what if Belinda told them I'd been rude to her? I shivered. I wasn't just nervous. I was scared. Belinda's parents were even uglier than she was. One of them had grown his fur all around his mouth by mistake. Daddy! cried Belinda. The other one had heaps of fur, orange and curly. It was tied to her head with lots of little ribbons, to stop it escaping. Mummy! squealed Belinda. The alien smiled timidly. To my surprise, they looked. Frightened. They can't be scared of us, I thought. After all, they're the aliens. They're the weird looking ones, not us. They both came up and shook the captain's tentacle. So they weren't afraid of him. Then they shook my tentacle, and rose. So they weren't afraid of us. They looked at Belinda, and I realized it was Belinda they were scared of. Hey, hello, dear, wavered Belinda's mother. We are so sorry we kept you waiting. We came as fast as we could, said her father anxiously. Please don't be angry with us. I got ready to block my ears, because I was sure Belinda was going to shout at him. They thought so too. They looked amazed when Belinda said, in a quiet, polite voice, Thank you for coming, dearest daddy. Huh? He couldn't believe it. Thank you, dear beloved mommy. What? She couldn't believe it either. I said thank you, yelled Belinda, and then she stopped. I beg your pardon, she said quietly. 
I didn't mean to shout. These are the dear delightful aliens I've been staying with. Although they look so hideous, they've been quite kind. Mostly, she gave me a look. We are very grateful, said Belinda's mother faintly. Shall we go now? Belinda said goodbye very politely. She curtsied to all of us. She even kissed Rhoda. I'm glad she didn't kiss me. Goodbye, her father said. Thank you for taking care of her. You must come and visit us on Earth someday. None of us answered. We just smiled as they climbed on board. We waved as the ship took off. We watched it get smaller and smaller, and disappear amongst the stars. Then we heaved a sigh of relief. I never want to visit Earth, I said. Not if it's full of aliens like Belinda. I think we'll give Earth a miss, agreed my fearless father. Imagine being bossed around all day. Just as well none of us is like that, said my father. I've never met anyone so rude. I liked her, said Roa. What? I thought she was wonderful, said Roa. She had such lovely yellow fur. I wish I was an alien. We both stared at Roa. She was tying her purple fur into long, thin ropes. What are you looking at? She said. I'm hungry. I want a double sludge cake, with extra slime. And make it snappy. Or else. I said, you've got to fix my shuttle. Belinda glared at my brave and noble father, the captain. He took a nervous step back. We are trying, he said. But it's badly damaged. Then try harder. Have you called my parents on the radio yet? Oh, yes, said the captain. Several times, but there's no answer. Well, you'd better get an answer soon. I'm tired of waiting, and I'm hungry. Would you like something to eat, dear Allie, dear Belinda? I asked. Her eyes lit up. You bet. What have you got? I listed my favorite dishes for her. There's mold soup, I said, or slime sludge cake. Or perhaps you'd like fungus delight? Yup, shouted Melinda. They sound disgusting. We have to grow all our food tanks, explained Rhoda. The sludge cake's very nice. Melinda shook her head so hard that her yellow ropes whipped to and fro. I want a hamburger, she announced, and make it snappy. Rhoda nearly fainted. You mean... Dead animal? We don't eat animals, I said, with a shudder. Animals are our friends. It's not very polite to eat your friends. Bring me some sludge cake, then, grunted Belinda. Double helpings, with extra slime. Belinda ate four helpings of slime sludge cake. When she finished, she didn't look quite so pink. She turned a nice shade of green. You look much better now, said Roa admiringly. Belinda put her hand to her mouth. Where's your toilet? She groaned. Roa showed her. When Belinda came out of the toilet she wasn't pink, or green. She was bright red. That's a terrible toilet. She shouted. I need to lie down. Where's your bed? I showed her my bed. Her eyes goggled. That's not a bed. That's a wardrobe. We sleep standing up, I told her. Can't go to sleep in that, yelled Belinda. What a pity, I said. We could do with some peace and quiet. Rose stared at me in surprise. I felt ashamed. I'd never been rude before in my life. I don't know what came over me. Belinda scowled. She jabbed one of her wigglies in my stomach and hissed. Just you wait, fuzzball. Just you wait till my parents arrive. I'll tell them how you've treated me. You better start being nice to me right now or else. I never believed in aliens. Not until last week. I live on a spaceship. A great big space Arkansas my dear father is the captain. We travel through deep space, making star maps. It's a lonely life, but I like it. It's nice and peaceful, just us and the stars. We thought we had the galaxy to ourselves. We never met any aliens. Until last week. I was in the schoolroom with my little sister, Roa. I just had my spelling pill. Now, dear child, said the teacher. How do you spell light? 
L I Y W O Q G H T? H M M. I think we need to change the dose. Meanwhile, Roa had her maths injection. 6 plus 4? The teacher asked.